welcome back to my channel. My name is Alara Nagiri. I post here on my YouTube channel every Monday and Saturday. As you guys already know that if you guys have been here for some time. But first off, we're going to go ahead and start off with my beautiful client. And we are going to be pushing back her cuticles just because I want them up and out of the way. And I want to expose more of her nails. Sometimes I have some clients that their, their cuticles actually really stick to their natural nails. And with that being said, like pushing them back exposes probably like a quarter of an inch of their nails so with her hers aren't too too bad like that um i don't want to say bad because it's not bad either way but um she just doesn't require as much work as that so but i still do like to push them back as much as i can and have them up and out of my way so when i am filing and i am prepping cuticle area i can get there in those little bit of spaces Hers, they do kind of want to tend to come back down. So if you guys do see me pushing back and things like that, that is pretty much why. But I am going to be using a fine sanding band. And I am just going to go ahead and lightly prep her nail. I just want to remove that shine. I don't want to dig that file into her nails or anything like that. I don't want to make any type of filing marks. I just simply want to make sure that it is nice and prepped and the shine is all gone. Make sure at this point, tell them not to touch their nails just because they will run their fingers across them trying to get that dust off and things like that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and get this little bitty bitty cuticle bit and I am just going to go ahead and prep the nails. You don't need to dig this into the nails either. It really just does its job on its own. Just go around the cuticles and it literally gets everything up and out of there. You guys could see all of that little dust. That is actually cuticle that is stuck on their nail bed and they don't even know it. Um, it's hard to kind of see with the naked eye. Sometimes if you have been doing nails for some time, you will know it's there. Um, just because the look of it is a little bit different, but I do feel like you have to kind of have an eye for that. But I am filming a TikTok in the middle of this, but now I'm gonna go ahead and dust these babies off, get them ready for when I apply the tips because I don't want no dust trapped underneath there and things like that. But I am going to go ahead and clip these cuticles to making sure that any of those cuticles are off. Her cuticles actually were re in really good condition. So I didn't really have to do too much crazy work. I do feel like with some people, um, when they do come back for their sets, I do feel like their cuticles are drier than others, especially if they are working with boxes and whatnot. So I do have to really go in and I spend a good amount of time just cleaning up their cuticles just so then it's all off and things like that. And I do feel like it gives a really, really nice look once they are gone. And I don't know if you guys could tell in that background, I did end up getting a new apron. And you guys, I don't know why I waited so long to get an apron for nails. Um, I've always used one when I do hair and things like that. And that was a whole purpose why I got this apron, but um, was for when I have my hair clients and things like that. But I did end up using it for nails and I actually love it. I love the fact that I am not a dusty mess after I am done doing nails. So definitely recommend one, 10 out of 10, recommend it. Um, this one, it was from Salon Centric. If I can, I will post it on my Instagram so you guys could see it. But I am going to go ahead and dehydrate the nail. I am using OPI's dehydrator. This stuff is the bomb.com. I love it. I love it. I'm always restocking on this. This is one of my staples in my collection as a nail tech. I've been using it for a very long time. And I have no reason to switch it. Alright guys, and now I'm going to be using these tips. These tips are actually going to be on my site. I do not have a date yet. I am trying to get everything together and get pictures done and things like that. But I did want to kind of showcase them a little bit, get you guys excited for them. I'm so excited to have these on my site and being able to offer them for you or to you guys. So I hope these guys are these help. They aren't a super, super, super C curve. They do have a slight C curve, but nothing crazy. I do find when I would use ones that did have that big old C curve, I did feel like I ended up having to file underneath the nails so they didn't end up looking so thick and bulky. I do feel like sometimes using that C curve ones, I do feel like they end up looking very, very thick. And I was not a fan of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply these. I am using Montage's glue. This stuff dries super fast. So if you guys are looking for a super fast drying glue, it's faster than 30 seconds, faster than 10 seconds. So make sure 
to pick this up if you guys are somebody who works really fast. I love this glue, but just keep in mind it if you are somebody who makes mistakes on applying the nail glue and you accidentally apply them crooked a lot of the times, this might not be your jam. But if you guys are someone who works fast and you guys are able to get the nail tips on straight every time, definitely recommend this. It it is easy to take them off if needed, but it doesn't have where like say once you stick it down, it is on there. It is not moving anywhere. All right, guys, um, now I'm going to go ahead and cut it these babies needed. down. I am going to be using my my little form thing so then I can make sure that all these nails are the same length. I know sometimes people they say that be, d their nail beds are different lengths. It's going to make the nails a whole bunch of different lengths. And in all honesty, I do use it sometimes with some of my clients and some of my clients I don't depending on their nail beds. If some of their nail beds are a lot longer than others, then I will kind of end up kind of just measuring them side by side and things like that. But her nail beds are pretty much all even. So I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and just clip them all down to the length she desires. And then we're going to go ahead and start to prime and put some primer on. <laughs> and then we are going to go ahead and put the acrylic on. Sorry, you guys. I get a little bit tongue tied in my brain, if that makes any sense. So I feel like I can't always get out the words that I'm trying to say. But I hope you guys completely understand what I mean. And so something that I do want to tell you guys is it's better to double check, triple check instead of having to end up going back and adding more and more tips to it. So I always cut a little bit longer and go shorter as needed. All right, it is time to blend the corner of these tips, making sure that it is going to blend seamless. And then when I apply the colored acrylic, it's not going to end up poking through. But something that I do want to mention about these tips, they are great because they end up hugging the nail. I find with a lot of times with using other tips, I do feel like they want to flare out. And that honestly, it does drive me a little bit nuts. So with that being said, I do love that these really want to hug the nail instead of flare up on the corners. And the band that I am using, the band that I am using is a fine sanding band. It is the same one that I did end up using to prep her nails. When I am blending the tip in, I am not touching her natural nail at all. I am just going on the tip. And I'm going to go ahead and dust these off. I like to dust it off in between things just because I don't want there to be any dust with the primer and things like that. So I'm going to be getting Young Nails Primer. And I like to prime or dehydrate twice and prime twice. Okay, guys, now I'm going to go ahead and get this paper towel, fill up my Dappen dish, and get ready for this application. I am so excited. Montage had actually just opened up their new store, and you guys, it is beautiful. If you guys are on the way to Vegas, make sure to check it out. It is on the way to Vegas if you are coming from L8 area. And I had just went over there. I picked up a few things. Let me know down in the comments if you guys would like to see my haul. I picked up a ton of stuff more than what I needed but I hope you guys go and check it out tag me if you guys end up going to check it out and yeah I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as I do I love me some nail products so definitely always will be there um and let me know if you guys are a beginner nail tech and you guys would like to help me shop with you to show you guys different things there that is are actually really really good just because I do pretty much have a good amount of their collection actually so if you guys need help shopping, let me know. All right, guys, I am going to be using this milky color. And this is a nice soft color um, where you are actually able to put it down. And it just looks so pretty. 
Sorry, you guys. I am currently trying to open a package that I got from Nail Stuff. So I'm a little bit sidetracked. But I do like to do the two bead method for this. And um, I like to make sure to clean up underneath, making sure I keep this, the shape of the nail by sliding the brush along the sides and tapping the belly of the brush at the bottom of the tip. And I'm going to go ahead and drain that bead and put it by the cuticle. The reason why I do drain it for the cuticle is because I don't want it to end up running up into the cuticle and all of that. And then I like to just blend it down. And then I like to blend the rest of the bead into the rest of the nail. And look how pretty. I love the way these came out. And I'm going to go ahead and just... Make sure the sides are all good and cleaning off the ends. And if there is anything under the nail, I'm going to go ahead and clean that off too. And cleaning up the cuticle area if it was a bit messy. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one, that milky color too. And I am just going to go ahead and blend that up just so it still remains thick at the edge of the nail but this one I do plan on doing a glitter but I do feel like with sugaring glitter on I do like to sugar it on I don't like to really encapsulate too much just because I do feel like the look of sugaring is so much more prettier than encapsulating it for me it is just personal preference I know some people they can encapsulate it and it looks so good but with me I do feel like I don't know, I feel like it looks better when I just sugar it on. And the next color that I am getting ready to use, I unfortunately I don't really know the color name of it, but it is also from Montage Nail Supplies. But I'm sure if you guys show them a picture of these nails and ask them what color it is, they will be able to tell you. Alright you guys, and now I'm going to go ahead, and I was in between two different colors, but I did end up picking out this one. She pretty much let me pick out anything I wanted to do from the sets that were in her phone, and this was the one that I did end up really, really liking. I thought it would look really pretty, and these are her birthday nails as well. So I did want them to be cute, glittery, and kind of a little bit more out there. And so she had told me that she trusted my judgment and that she let me pick the colors that I felt like would go best with it. She didn't care if the colors had matched the pictures exactly. So I did do a little bit of a different kind of color, but I do feel like the look of it was very, very pretty.
for you guys. I did feel the need to pull out another paper towel. I do feel like working on a clean paper towel is better than keep on wiping your brush off if there is a lot of acrylic on the towel. Just because I do feel like it tends to get the brush a lot more stickier and the product ends up settling into it more. So I do definitely like a midway through to like kind of just end up refreshing my paper towel and getting another one. Alright you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys know the brush that I am using just because this brush is pretty viral. Um, everyone loves this brush and including me, I do really really love working with Kiara Sky's brush. I did end up getting this not that long ago and I have been happy since using it. So definitely recommend this brush. It's a 10 out of 10. Um, getting a good brush is really important in finding a good brush or a brand that makes a really good quality brush. Just because sometimes I do feel like using a cheaper brush or a thinner brush or one that has less bristles, it's a lot harder to pick up the amount of monomer you need to place your beads. I'm going to go ahead and score my files and then I'm going to go ahead and just start to file the nails, making sure I keep it nice and crisp on each side and I'm going to start blending over the top and I'm basically going to be doing the same method that I did on the pinky. I'm going to be doing it to all the rest of the nails. And I just want to kind of even out the, the acrylic on the tip, so I went ahead and do so. Usually for the tips of the nail to make sure that they are all nice and straight, I do ask my client to flip their hand the other way and I will go from there. And I do feel like that method actually works really, really well for me to making sure that they are really nice and straight. You guys and right here you guys can see I flip her hand completely around and I'm just gonna go ahead in and go in and file and I even like to kind of sit back a little bit and see how they look once I am all done see if other things need to be straightened and then once I feel like I am done and I feel like all of them are pretty straight for me what I will do is I'll ask my client if there's anything that she wants different and how is the shape for her on them and usually they will tell me if there is something a little bit crooked or something that they want me to fix and so I'll go ahead and do so. Alright 
right now it's time to go in with an 80 or 180 gram buffer. These things are super soft. I like to use sponge buffers. Sponge buffers, I feel like, doesn't leave any ridges in the nail. You could actually even use a fine sanding bit. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend using the one to prep. I would definitely use a carbide bit. I do feel like it smooths out the nail even more. So if you guys are finding it's really hard to smooth out your scratches, just try a very fine carbide bit and you guys will be able to even buff with that as well. But I still love my sponge buffer. Regardless, if I were to do that, I will always end up going over it with a sponge buffer. Alright you guys, now I'm going to go ahead and apply this matte top coat. This matte top coat is from Tracy's Nails, also known as Colorland Gels. Um, now I believe it's more so called Colorland Gels. But I did end up having this. I am trying to actually finish this. So um, I've just been using it quite a bit. I do like the product. Um, but I do notice you do have to... Oh, I like it better on... Um, I mean lighter nails just because I do feel like on darker nails you might be able to notice a streak but now I'm going to go ahead and go in with my 3D art brush because we are going to be doing some 3D flowers and I am just going to go ahead and place a bead let it dry a little bit before I start working it in and then I am going to start to press it in the way that I need I do like to have that tip of the brush towards the center when I am pressing down on that bead because that allows me to have more control of it and make it more of a petal like. And I'm going to go ahead and place another one right on the side of there and then push it down almost with the belly of the brush. But I don't want my petals to turn out that big so you guys will see that I am actually going in kind of more with the very very tip of the brush trying to keep this flower very very small. If I do end up using the middle of the brush, which is more considered the belly of the brush, I do find that it does end up whitening them even more. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in my stone. And look how pretty that is. Every time I place a stone, I do have to watch it shine a little bit. So I will end up kind of shaking the nail back and forth or moving it back and forth. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and apply more petals. And then I am actually going to kind of just put three but angling them out as if the top flower is kind of overlapping that. And then after I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and get my resin. The resin that I am using is from Montage Nail Supply and so is the brush. All right, and this one I did end up only doing about like two petals right here. But I am going to clean up the sides of the brush with the or the sides of the petal with the tip of the brush and still trying to make sure that I keep it nice and small just because this is a small nail that I'm working on the nails that she did show me were very very long nails but so I'm trying to make sure I scale it to the perfect size so then I am able to fit a good amount and give that same effect as a long nails but on a shorter set so now I'm gonna go ahead and go in and place a bead right here and this one was a little bit hard for me just because it was in such a tight space and I didn't want the acrylic to be touching her skin. And I'm going to go ahead and place the other petal on the other side. And it is a very, very microscopic, so it is kind of a little bit hard to see on camera. But I did want to also place another one at that top just to give it a finished look. Just because I do feel like if I would have only did the two, it would have kind of looked funny. But now I'm going to go ahead and get my salt smallest Swarovski crystals and I'm just going to place them along the sides of the nails just to add a little bit more bling. And we put them on the pinky nail, two in a row. There was three but I did feel like these nails were a little bit too short to do that third one. So we ended up just doing two and then we are going to go ahead and do around her cuticle. And we are using a wax pencil. These are super, super nice to have if you guys are a nail tech, beginner or not. I love these. I know they have the crystal katanas too, but those ones retail for a lot of money. And this one right here, it is only a dollar for it. You guys can find these on Amazon or I did end up getting this one when I went to my local nail supply. Now I'm going to go ahead and get 
a top coat and I'm gonna go ahead and go over this nail and I'm trying to pick out the glitter I should use let me know down below which one you guys would have picked just because I feel like all of them were really really pretty but I did end up just going in and going in with this light white color but it does shine back a little bit gold you guys will see in the pictures at the end how pretty it looks but before I apply it I did want to wipe the sides just because Sometimes the gel will want to settle towards the sides and it will end up bulking the nail up even when you put this on. But you guys, this is the finished look. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And let me know what you guys think. Or right, you guys have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.